So here is one of the unfortunate things that happens to the feminine psyche or the feminine aspect of the psyche, like all of our psyche, right? But for men too. When we leave out the storyline of the Holy Mother God in our culture and in our spirituality. It's a beautiful shell, Bubba. Um, the other day I made a comment about the observation that I've made over the years that people in patriarchal based religion, which just means that there's only the father face of God, tend to live from their heart up or right above their heart up, right? They, they inhabit the top part of their bodies. And when we think about women in the fundamental three fundamental religions of the world what do you think about in terms of their relationship to their own sexuality their relationship to expression of their beauty and the way that they have to both behave and dress particularly in religious holy places i bet we think of Modesty, we think of being veiled or covered. There's different extremes of this, but that's one of the primary values of patriarchal religion is the feminine being veiled, the feminine being covered to some degree. And this makes sense in a lot of ways, right? Um, there's an important aspect to the feminine psyche around being veiled, right? This like mis mis There's a mystery to the feminine of um, it being so sacred and so holy that only the proper people in the correct spaces right have access to that level of, of her beauty and her purity and her holiness great so that makes sense there's also a piece of scripture i forget the i forget the exact piece of scripture but it's something along the lines of like how we should dress when we go to church and it says that we should be modest it says that we shouldn't be flashy basically it says we should be making our presence in holy spaces about God and not about ourselves. That's valid, right? We want to arrive to our places of worship making it about God, not making it about us. Okay, so that makes sense. But only within the context of a religion that only includes the father face of God in worship. Because if we look at the mother face of God, she loves. <laughs> she loves adornment. She is beauty itself. I want you to now observe cultures that have the feminine face of God intact in, in their culture, in their religious storylines. A great example of this is India. So if you look at Indian women, I want you to think about the typical like meme picture you have in your head about Indian women, the way that they dress and the way that they adorn themselves and the way that they move their bodies in sacred spaces, in holy places, um, in all celebrations, especially things like weddings and things like that. Uh, their art, the art inside of their temples. The women are half naked pretty much all the time. <laughs> pretty much all the time. Not only are they half naked, but they are fully adorned. From head to toe, they are decked out. They've got gold on gold. They've got jewelry. They've got henna. They've got beautiful, colorful garments. They've got uh, bangles. They've got bells, things that make sound. They have beautiful scents on them. They are adorned from head to toe. And the reason is because their culture has the feminine face of God intact. The feminine and the feminine face of God, she is matter. She is beauty. 
That's who she is. She's beauty. Take a look, my loves. Take a look at how beautiful this is. Of how beautiful our bodies are. That is the feminine. And the way that we worship the Holy Father is actually a bit different than the way our Holy Mother likes to be worshipped. Right? Christianity talks about um, how does our Father want us to worship Him, to praise Him, to honor Him. How do you think the feminine face of God wants to be praised and worshipped and honored? Right? It's a natural thing that we do when the feminine face of God is intact in our psyche, like in places like India. Not to say that patriarchy and sexual repression isn't a thing there, but you guys, I th think you can understand what I'm putting down here. It's a natural thing that happens when the feminine face of God is integrated within our culture and our storyline. And we start to address the feminine aspects of ourselves in the same way that we address the feminine face of God. And the act of adornment, the act of sensuality, the act of beauty becomes an offering to God. The way that women, like the women in India, the way that they dress themselves, the way that they move, the way that they celebrate the holy feminine temple, the way that they do that is actually in preparation and an offering. It's an act of worship to God. It's an essential part of every celebration and everything that they do is the way that they prepare their temple, the way that they adorn it. And their relationship to the mother is reflected in their relationship to themselves and the fact that their own beauty and their own adornment is, is a celebration, is an act of worship. They're allowed to dance centrally, move centrally. If you look at a, um, American Christian women, they don't move like that. They don't, they certainly do not dance like that in public. That is not the case for Indian women <laughs> because the feminine in a cultural religious sense is celebrated. It's a part of God. The feminine is a part of God. We have to understand about the, this part of the feminine psyche and this part of God, the feminine face of God, because she is beauty, what she needs to be revered, what she needs to be respected is to be witnessed, to behold her beauty, to witness her beauty and to love and cherish and adore her beauty, to be set for her beauty, to be celebrated, for you to look outside and see her trees, her colors, her elements, her animals, for you to see all of this and just be astounded, be in complete awe. The feminine needs that. Because that's what life is, right? The feminine is a birther, a life giver, and life is beautiful so to appreciate the feminine to appreciate women to appreciate the maternal face of god we have to celebrate the beauty that is our lives the beauty that is the feminine the beauty that is matter the idea that god doesn't live on the planet but live somewhere up there and we have to get rid of anything extra here we've misunderstood what ego death and we've misunderstood what purification actually means it does not mean eradicating half of God which is the extravagant abundant beauty wellspring of love of ecstasy of pleasure gorgeousness a lotness too muchness and if you are in a religion or in a culture where that is not celebrated, unfortunately here in America, I think this is true for the whole world, that aspect of who we are has been distorted deeply and cele celebrated, but not actually celebrated and revered in the correct ways. Um, it's been distorted. And so then we, we, it's like this important aspect of who we are has been disowned and repressed out of 
um, a moral code out of a bunch of rules that are supposed to be a moral code. And because of that repression, it then comes out in unholy, unsacred ways. Because it's coming out in all of these unhealthy ways, we use that to reaffirm our belief that sensuality and sexuality itself, that adornment itself, that lavish, extravagant, flashy celebration of the feminine itself is wrong or unhealthy. And my loves, it, it is not. It's not. This is an aspect of who we are. It is, an a it is one of the primary aspects of the feminine that no matter how deeply you suppress it, no matter how deeply you attempt to disown it, it'll always be a part of you. And if it's not owned and integrated healthily on an individual level and a cultural level, it's going to continue to express in unhealthy ways. And if you are a woman, if you are a woman, here you go, Bubba. If you are a woman in one of these religious cultural places where its foundation is patriarchy only and leaves out the maternal storyline, it's extremely likely. It's extremely likely that even if you have a wonderful husband that adores you and adores your sex, even if you don't feel particularly shameful about your beauty or sexuality, it's likely that there are aspects of your celebratory feminine, of your feminine psyche that are undernourished, underexpressed, and deeply repressed. And you might not even know it. Adorning the body, celebrating the beauty of the body, dressing in a way that expresses ourselves, moving our bodies in a way that expresses ourselves and our senses and our pleasure and our beauty, and then having the world witness us in that, to be witnessed and to be loved and respected in that, not in a competitive way. When the feminine is repressed so strategically in our culture, in our lineage in our religion in ourselves we're afraid of it we misunderstand it we are ashamed of it mostly we just don't go there because we're scared to and to bring it home i just i really believe this to be one of the most important just like things to observe one of the differences to observe between cultures that have the mother intact and cultures that don't. And understanding that beauty, adornment, extra, extra, <laughs> is actually an offering. Does That doesn't take away from God, but actually is the act of worship, at least to the feminine face of God. Things like offering flowers or cleaning the space or creating a beautiful altar or a beautiful gift or offering um, some form of abundance like food or money, um, the act of adorning our own body and enhancing and celebrating our own beauty, that is an act of worship for the feminine. And the feminine needs to be seen in that. In order for our mother to feel worshipped and revered, in order for the human woman to feel cherished, to feel loved, she has to be seen in her beauty. And she has to know that it's okay to celebrate her beauty. And how we help women heal in this way, we have to begin to revere and be in awe of our own beauty and then bow to other women and revere their beauty as deeply as you revere your own. And then also offer that to the earth, to our mother, revere her beauty, go outside and revere her. It's amazing to me how often I'll go out dressed like this and I watch women's mind blow up when they expect me to be sexually competitive or a bitch and I'm actually bowing to them <laughs> devotionally and their hearts open. I bow to their beauty. I bow to you, sister. 
I'm going to go live my life now. Love you guys.